Thank you. Great, we appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, welcome to the Dregs Arizona debut. It's uh, great to be here in Tucson and certainly great to play for such a nice, intimate audience and also the radio people listening. This uh, first couple of tunes we did, by the way, were on our first album, which was entitled Free Fall. And the first song was Free Fall, followed by Mow Down, followed by the refried funky chicken. Just thought I'd get that in there. This next one we've got is a song which is on the new album, and uh, it's, it's really a drastically different song. It's a pretty heavy tune. It's called Night Meets Light.
Thank you. Now we'd like to do the only song that you'll hear tonight that we didn't write or someone in the band didn't write. This thing is, uh, well, you know, we're from the South, we're from Georgia, we got a lot of strange roots, you might say, and uh, this is one place it came from. This is a song we did called The Wabash.
Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Okay, yeah, that was called Wages of Weirdness, and that was also on our first album. That was preceded by Travel Tunes, which is on the What If album. Both these records, by the way, are in Capricorn. I might as well give ourselves a plug on this. We need to uh, sell some albums out here, so, uh, you know, check it out. This one uh, is, an, is on our first record, and this is a real special tune because uh, only two members of the band perform it. This is a song written by our guitarist, Steve Morrison, performed by him and Alan Sloan on violin. It's a duet called Northern Lights. <laughs>
That was a uh, yeah. That was an unrecorded tune, sort of our ode to rock and roll. We called it Punk Sandwich, just for some weird reason. This next one we've got is a, <coughs> excuse me, a song that's on our new album. And before we do this last song, I'd like to go ahead and tell you about the new album. It's called What If. It's on Capricorn Records, and it's a, uh, it's a very fine album. We're really proud of what we did on it, and uh, it's got a lot of good music on it. So check it out. This one is on it, and it's called The Odyssey.
We'd like to uh, really thank the Dregs for coming in and playing for us this evening. It's not often we have such talent to come in and play for us. Mm -hmm. And we would like to thank all you nice folks for coming in and helping out the Dregs. So once again, would you welcome Capricorn recording artist, the Dixie Dregs. <laughs>
it okay now uh, well I should go ahead and announce what those tunes were for those of you who are wondering the first song we did was take it off the top and then that was followed by an unrecorded tune the country house shuffle and now we've got a song up and uh, last one that you just heard was ice cakes also on the new album I'll go ahead and plug it one more time the new album is on Capricorn records and uh, it's by us the Dixie Dregs and by the way Jim almost had it right we're from Atlanta not Hilton Head our manager lives in Hilton Head Give him a little plug, too. What the heck? Uh, this is the title cut. Anyhow, this is the title cut off our new album. It's called What If.
that was uh, Gina Lola Breakdown. That's on her new album. I'd like to, at this point, since this next song is going to be the last song of the evening, thank you people very much for uh, the appreciative response and hopefully for listening out in the radio and all that other good stuff. I think the people in Tucson are very fortunate to have such a fine radio station as this to allow concerts, you know. And, uh, you know, they deserve a good something. Really. <laughs> we got... We got one more song, and uh, just remember the Dixie Dregs from Atlanta on Capricorn. This one is called Cruise Control.
The Dixie Dregs. All right, the Dixie Dregs. And we are live from Lee Furs. Woo! Intense. <laughs> okay, this afternoon we had a. What we're going to do right now is take about a 10 minute break so everybody can sort of get up and stretch their legs or whatever you want to stretch. And you people at home can do whatever you want to do. And we're going to run an interview that we ran this afternoon with the Dixie Drags. Run it. Earlier this afternoon, we talked with Steve Mars, the uh, guitar player, and Andy West, the bass player of the Drags. And first off, I'd like to welcome you to Tucson. And thanks for coming by and playing for us this evening. Thank you. It's, it's great to be here. here. And uh, Steve, you're the uh, principal composer of the uh, Drags. And could you reiterate on how that, all, how that whole phase started out back at the University of Miami? Okay, we are... Uh, Andy and I, that's the two of us that are here, have been playing together all the way back from uh, early weekend rock and roll, you know, underground music bands, and, you know, slowly infiltrating that with, you know, original stuff that, that 
that we wrote. And uh, anyway, I was down at the University of Miami studying music, you know, after the weekend rock and roll band phase. And we were, uh, I got together a rock ensemble with students from the school and got Andy to come down to the school and, you know, enroll in some music courses. To now, this was pretty much a new thing to the university people at that right. particular time. Well, it was a jazz department. That was a thing. Right. And you got into school by uh, you, uh, a classical guitar audition, right? And you didn't have a high school diploma, and they you, they were so impressed with you that they let you in anyway, right? Well, I was a problem case, that's for sure, because <laughs> I was... I, I went to school as a classical guitar principal with a jazz uh, music degree playing in the rock ensemble. Right. So anyway, the, the rock ensemble was the band that we got together, five-piece band. And uh, in fact, four or five of us are still exactly the same members. So we transplanted. We went through that for, uh, I think, three and a half semesters with everybody. And when the last person graduated, we took it on the road, and this is our third year of being a professional and you, musician. And this is your second album with Capricorn. Yeah. How do you compare the music with the uh, second album as you did with the first album? I'll let Andy answer that. Because it is a little different, you know. Yeah, yeah well, I think that uh, it, it just seems like the second album leans a little bit more towards a heavily produced, orchestrated sound, which is really what we went after from the beginning. The first album is... Uh, is mu We do a lot of music still from the first album. I mean, we aren't going to outgrow that music for a long time. It's, right. it's, it's great music. We're really proud of what we've done on it. But it's just it just has a little bit lighter feel to it, you know. And uh, the new album is, is more hev heavily rock-influenced. And uh, I think it just stretches out into a wider variety of directions really you have a song like take it off the top which is you know you really are kind of basic rock and roll song even though it might not be for some other bands but for us it's a real heavy rock thing and then a song like night meets light which really spaces out into some new directions i think uncovered you know by our band and um that's that's the main difference really was that the reason of the producer that the album came out like this the new producer that you had for this album Very the cool. sounds were not necessarily the music the music is a constantly evolving thing you know whatever steve comes up with and whatever the band helps put together is is always changing but the sound of the album was uh you know due to ken scott a great deal i mean he just we said hey we want to sound heavy we want the drums to sound like cannons you know right. or, or something and he made it happen so for a band to come out of the South that has, uh, uh, behind a lot of other bands, you know, this is the first time that uh, a band has come out with this type of music that hasn't had a vocal, okay? Now, what are your feelings on adding a vocal? A lot of people have asked us, they've called us at the radio station and want to know, uh, uh, why doesn't this band have a vocal? The idea was to play music, play as much music as possible. And when you look back in, you know, from the very beginning of time, music has never had to be... Uh, a song with repetitive chords in the background there there are such things you know in history like you know from operettas and and uh, chamber music all the way up to pop songs but there's also another side of music which is heavily arranged and thought out just music you know right. it, the music itself tells a whole story without limiting it to words you know what I mean you have so many more options with instrumental music you can do more the players can do more and the listener can i think can uh, imagine a lot more and and get more from it because you're not saying well this this word and this word and, and paint a story so uh literally it's a real cerebral kind of effect our music has on people i think you know it's just uh it's all it's in the head and the, and the body as well but it's just uh you don't you, you know you're not conscious of any like you said stories or anything like that but another interesting point about it is that uh when we first started out we just played you know it was it was an evolutionary thing it just happened it was just what grew out of us and only after we started getting more and more jobs and playing more and more places did we start to get questions like well uh why don't you guys have a vocalist i mean it, to us it had never occurred you know yeah, it just right. wasn't even part of the be from the beginning it just wasn't there it was just you know it's just our thing to play the music and uh so you know well, there's nothing wrong with that no i'm just explaining yeah you know? sure yeah, yeah this, it's great that you can uh, that you can have a band like this you know they can be that 
solid with the sound of, uh, of instrumental music, you know, and get the response that you get from people, as you, the response you've seen that you've gotten from people that you've played in front of. Yeah. You know, I've heard people tell me that sea uh, level, they don't like for you to open for them because you play so good. You know, you play so good in front of them that it blows everybody that. away. So well, we, we just play yeah. good when we play. We try and play as good as we possibly can. We try and get over on the audience, no matter what audience it is. You know, right. yeah, give them their money's worth. That's, Are you playing a uh, a lot a lot of large halls now, or since you just started here, or a lot of the smaller clubs? At this stage, it's it's the most unbelievable mixture you can imagine. In uh, well, we have a lot of strong markets, and in those markets, you know, where, where we're selling tickets on shows, stuff, you know, we go on like with Marshall Tucker or, or Hart, what was the other thing? <laughs> Helen Santana. Lee, Santana. Santana. And, you know, do rock and roll shows, but at the same time, we'll, we'll go into another, you know, what we call secondary or, or smaller market and do clubs, listening clubs, you know, where people come to, to be entertained, and it's, you know, their cover maybe is more than a regular right. disco or something. And you're but fixing to do that now with the Roxy engagement, right? That's a pretty big deal, though, still. You know, the Roxy well, that, is, Does that name. feel like, to, to the band, does that feel like a big step for you? Yeah. Playing with Cobham, Billy Cobham, that's, that's the main thing. And you'll be doing, you'll be doing three nights doing in front of a lot of people, you yeah, know, right. a lot of people you know, that... Uh, L.A. is a big place. It's a it's a major market, like Steve was saying. You know, it's it's an important place because it, it's it's such a cosmopolitan city and it's so large that you can you can play a place like the Roxy in three days, reach several hundred or maybe even a thousand people, but that thousand people means so much more than a thousand people in a small town because there's only a few people that a thousand people can tell in a small town. In L.A., there's millions, you know, and it just spreads out. It's a real... Uh, some some kind of effect, you know, it's hard to say. The big cities really have a big effect, you know. Right. Well, we uh, here in Tucson certainly enjoy your music, and we're glad you could uh, come all the way from Atlanta. You guys live out of Atlanta now. Yeah, right. I just want to make a statement about Tucson, you know, sure. because it's sort of weird. We're talking about all these other cities. This is a place we've never been, and uh, it's... We're thankful for the opportunity just to reach people over the radio like this. You know, we'd like to do a live show where a lot of people could come in, but at the at the point we're at now, we really can't do that, you know, because right. people don't really know about us, except with the help of you guys, you know, playing the record and all that, and we appreciate that. Yeah, yay. <laughs> but, uh, no problem. You know, it's great, man. Like, uh, you play people or people everywhere. You know, one person who gets off on the band means as much as one person anywhere else, you know. Well, that one person getting off on the band is going to eventually lead to another person or ten other right, people right. getting off on that same band. And and plus, our music has a real sense of communication about it. I think that when we play something that, that, that affects people, they are really affected by it. They aren't not, you know, they're just not like, eh, you know. Well, that's the idea. You, you, nobody's going to get up and tell a friend about something that's just like everything else. So you, you got to... You know, try to open a few jaws when you play. Very well said. We're speaking with uh, Steve Mars and Andy West of the Dixie Dregs, and we'll be back live very shortly. Tonight's broadcast is coming to you live from Leafer's Recording Studios in Tucson. FM 92 hopes you enjoy the excitement. And once again, we're back live at Leafer's. Thank you. We'd like to uh, really thank the Dregs for coming in and playing for us this evening. It's not often we have such talent to come in and play for us. <laughs> and we would like to thank all you nice folks for coming in and helping out the Dregs. So once again, would you welcome Capricorn recording artist, the Dixie Dregs. <laughs> 